Well, this is going to be a new little project, uh, one that I know is not going to work, but we're going to do it anyhow, just in the name of research. Here, you can see, is my old Jenny motor. I've um, removed it from the gasoline engine, and my plan is to bolt it up to this 24 volt DC electric motor, and of course, attempt to loop the system. Now we know there's a 99.99% uh, .99 chance that it's not going to work, but uh, I'm going to give it a try anyway, just to see the effects as to having the generator open and loop back to the motor, just to see how close we can get it. The motor is running at the moment. Of course our motor is a 1 horsepower 24 volt motor, um, and at the moment I have it hooked up to 12 volts. And this is simply just to get the amp draw and the voltage of the motor. And the reason being is we're going to strip it down and uh, clean up all the bearings, pre them up, thin oil in, take a bit of tension off the brushes and make the motor as efficient as we can get it. Maybe even change the timing a little on the brushes and see how much we can get it down from here. So 12.14 volts at 3.96 amps. So I'm just going to write that down. It gives us a benchmark. 12.14 3.96 amps. Okay, so the first step, like I said, is we're going to rip the motor down free up all the bearings, remove the seals because they're very stiff. I'm not sure whether this is the bearings or the tension on the brushes or a combination of both I would think. So uh, we're going to try and leave them both and see what we can get our amp draw down to. And yes, this is an old battery that was flat. Um, now the problem we have is we need 73mm to the end of the taper on the shaft and at the moment we only have about 48 mil so I'm going to have to extend the motor shaft while we've got it apart and machine the taper on it to suit the taper in the rotor um, which we've done on the gasoline engine so hopefully we can do it just as easy on this the other thing we have to do is be able to bolt this directly to the motor. So here we have our four bolt holes, which I'm going to have to drill and tap into here, into the right spot. Now, unlike most motor generator setups that people are trying, uh, this will be directly on the shaft of our motor. So we will not have any couplings between a motor and generator and we will not have the extra added bearing drag on the generator as well. The only drag we're going to see from the generator will of course be the four brushes which I'm also going to lighten off and make that as little as possible. So um, I'm going to get to it, strip the motor down, have a look inside. I'm suggesting there's some very big ferrite magnets in there, but uh, we'll strip it down, have a look, and see how we go. And uh, once again, while I've got to strip down, I'll extend the shaft and machine the taper on it, drill the holes in the face plate in the right spot, so as it's centered, and uh, we'll come back and see how we go with our amp draw before we go coupling anything up to it. Okay, so we have our motor apart inside very large magnets uh, ferrite magnets of course if they were um, anything else I'd imagine we'd be stuck to the shed wall by now okay so the bulk of the drag is coming from these four very large brushes which are quite heavily spring loaded so I'm going to have to try and um, relieve the tension on the springs somehow to 
knock the drag off a bit. The bearing grease being so old has gone a bit thick and uh, they are a little bit stiff but um, nothing really worth worrying about. We'll give them a clean up and fill them up with oil. I'll we'll put some oil in there instead of grease. It's nice thin machine oil or something like that. The rotor is going to present a bit of a problem trying to hold this in the lathe somehow. Um, unfortunately the bore in my lathe isn't big enough to slide that through. It's big enough to get the uh, armature through but um, not the windings so we can't uh, grab it by the um, core itself so I'm not really sure. We can't put this end in the lathe because uh, that's the end we want a machine and add two. So this one's going to be a bit tricky. Not sure how I'm going to do that just yet. Uh, okay, the face plate off the motor. I'll chuck that in the forward jaw, centered it with the uh, bearing housing, and machine this hole here out. You're going to have to fit over our boss on the uh, Jenny motor carrier and we have marked the four holes we must drill and tap hopefully I got them lined up with those ribs there to give us a bit of extra meat on the threads so they look very close so uh, we'll see how we go so that's where we're at at the moment the bulk of the drag like I said is coming from these four very large brushes so uh, we'll have to see if we can't um, do something about that Take these uh, springs off and let them flip around 180 degrees and then slip them back on the cradle and uh, see if we've got enough there left to um, push the brushes onto the armature. So uh, that one there is very tight. And we have a lot of brush left so um, it's a good indication that the motor hasn't really done a lot of work or it's had a set of brushes put in it. It has 10-13 there. So, not sure, I know it wasn't done up in the 10th um, month of 2013 because we haven't got there yet. Uh, so, we don't know, they look pretty healthy. It's reasonably clean inside, a little bit of dust, and we'll just give it a blowout and uh, clean and free them bearings up a little bit, and we'll see how we go. Until the next part. Cheers. Okay, so um, we've got all our holes drilled and tapped to hold our uh, Jenny motor onto our electric motor. I've cleaned the armature up on the uh, rotor. And if you're going to do this, make sure you use some very fine sandpaper and sand it this way, not that way. If you sand it that way, you're simply going to make a nice fine file to chew brushes away. So always go around. And then get a Stanley trimmer and clean all the old carbon and that out between each segment of the armature. Because you'll get a carbon build-up in there from the brushes. And even some um, dragging of the copper from one section to the next. And that will actually draw more current than you uh, should be and make the motor less efficient because you've got the next pole coming on before it should be so uh, just clean out in between all the grooves and sand around the armature not up and down it the brushes I've released the spring half a turn and they were too loose so I've had to bend the tabs back in a bit and uh, now they're nice and loose. Yes my hands are very dirty because I've been doing all this machining and that with this machine. And uh, we've cleaned all the bearings out, taken the seals off them, some very light oil in there and uh, spinning nice and free. So we're going to reassemble the motor now and give it another run, see if we've made any difference to the uh, current drawer on it. And I'll also have to take the measurement of the shaft from the face plate so I know how much to add on to the shaft 
which is going to be a bit tricky. I think that fan might have to go. Um, but we'll see how we end up there. Anyway, so we'll put the motor back together and uh, spin it up and see what happens. Okay, well, we've put our motor back together after our little tune-up and service. And it's running away quite nicely there, fairly quiet. You can hear the bearings a little bit because the oil is very thin. And uh, there's no caps on the bearings. Okay, as far as our brush tension goes, and our arm is a clean-up. It's Mickey Mouse, absolutely no sparks at all happening in there, no arcing, which means good contact and good timing with the brushes. So we don't have to touch that anymore. Okay, so what did we gain? Well, when we started, we had 12.14 volts and 3.96 amps, which is 48 watts. What we have now, is 1.88, we'll say 1.9 amps, 12.26 volts. Now the battery hasn't been charged, um, it's simply not been pulled down as much because we're not drawing anywhere near the amperage. So we have our 12.26, 1.9 amps gives us 23.3 watts. So we've not over half of the power draw off of this motor simply by cleaning up the bearings, cleaning up the armature and taking a bit of tension off the brushes. So well worth the time to clean the armature up and get all that carbon out from between each segment of your armature and clean up the bearings and knock some tension off the brushes. So and you can see quite clearly what difference it has made so I'm um, very happy with that we're off to a good start now like I said we're not expecting anything over unity here or anything like that but we will get an idea as to how much of a loss the system is how much we'd actually have to gain somehow to uh, make it a self runner you do hear a lot of guys hooking generators up to electric motors and claiming that they're running themselves but uh, I don't really think that's possible in the uh, normal sense of what we're doing here and we're going to see how close we can come. The brushes on our generator, there's four of them as well, they're going to be the only drag, there's no more bearings as the inverted bolts don't get to the shaft, so the shaft and the motor bearing could be holding that up. We are going to lose a little bit more in the brushes and uh, we'll see if we can't do the same trick. Chop a few of the uh, coils off the springs, get some graphite grease in there and uh, make them as free as we can. See how good we can get it. So uh, the next video I'll put up as soon as I've got the shaft all done and then the generator bolted to it and we'll go from there. But uh, we've certainly kicked the current drawer in the gut simply by cleaning everything up and flattening off the brushes a bit. Cheers guys.